job description. Then employers can invite candidates. The regular session of Roanoke City Council for June 21st, 2021 is hereby called to order and I will ask our clerk, Ms. Stephanie, um, excuse me, <laughs> Ms. Susie McCoy to please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Here. Mr. Bespich. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Jeffrey. Here. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Here. 
Ms. Sanchez Jones? Here. And Mayor Lee? Here. And the quorum is present. Thank everybody for being with us this afternoon. And we're pleased to have uh, the Reverend Anthony Holmes, pastor of Loudoun Avenue Christian Church, to deliver our invocation this afternoon. And Pastor Holmes will join us by electronic communications to uh, deliver his invocation. Pastor, welcome. Thank you. And following your invocation, we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Holmes. Thank you, Pastor. All right, welcome, everybody, to our final meeting for the month of June. Uh, and the beginning of our summer meetings. The summer is officially uh, here. I think it'll be tomorrow. Well, some calendars are tomorrow and some may be today, but it's summertime and we can tell that by the weather outside. <laughs> Today's council meeting will be televised live and replayed on RVTV Channel 3 on Thursday, June 24th at 7 o'clock p.m. and Saturday, June 26th at 4 o'clock p.m and video stream through Facebook Live at facebook.com slash RoanokeVA. Council meetings are offered with closed captioning for the hearing impaired. Announcements. The Council of the City of Roanoke is seeking applications for the following current vacancies and or upcoming expiration of terms of office. The Board of Zoning Appeals, one vacancy. Personnel and Employment Practices Commission, two vacancies. Roanoke Arts Commission, one vacancy. Roanoke Public Library Board, two vacancies. Roanoke Valley Allegheny Regional Commission, one vacancy. Touring Advisory Board, one vacancy, uh, and that's a citizen at large position. And for any of these vacancies, please know that uh, you can access the city's homepage to complete an online application for any of them. And you can call our clerk's office, and they will guide you through that process because as a council, we're always interested in those citizens who want to help us govern the city, serve on boards and commissions 
you're needed. So we ask you do not hesitate to fill out an application. Come on and uh, we'll help you uh, to get that to the council and uh, we look forward to, to many of our citizens coming forward and being partake, partakers of us uh, as we try to work hard to, in, to uh, improve the quality of life here for all of our citizens here in the city and in the valley. All right, we are now down to the, to the presentations and acknowledgments. And we have several proclamations of, that we're gonna read. And uh, the first proclamation is declaring Sunday, June 20th, uh, which was yesterday, as World Refuge Day. And uh, I have council member Sanchez Jones to read the proclamation in its entirety. And Mr. J. Brown, CEO of Commonwealth Catholic Charities, will by Zoom be with us to accept the proclamation and offer remarks. So I now call on uh, Councilman Sanchez Jones. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And it's with pride that I would read this proclamation. Um, World Refugee Day. Whereas World Refugee Day is an annual commemoration to honor and raise awareness of refugees. Whereas the city of Roanoke is a welcoming city that celebrates the growing diversity of its residences and acknowledges that refugees, immigrants, and all newcomers enhance the culture and the economy. Whereas more than 70 million displaced people had been forced from their home worldwide more than any time in recorded history, including over 25 million refugees. Whereas refugees are people who had fled their country because they have a well-founded fear of persecution because of their race, religion, nationality, political opinion, or membership in a particular social group. Whereas resettlement provides safe haven when refugees cannot return home and cannot rebuild their lives in their country, they fled due to lack of access to safety, shelter, health care, education, and protection. Whereas the city of Roanoke is home to a diverse population of refugees and immigrants, adding to the economic strength and cultural richness of our community. And whereas residents of the city of Roanoke aspire to live up to our highest societal values of acceptance and equity and treat newcomers with decency and respect, creating a vibrant community for all to live in. Now, therefore, I, Vivian Sanchez Jones, council member, on behalf of Sherman P. Lee, senior mayor of the city of Roanoke, do hereby proclaim June 20, 21 as World Refugee Day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. And uh, Mr. Brown, uh, if you have any comments or anything you'd like to say. Humbled and honored to accept this proclamation declaring June 20th as World well Refugee Day and be recognized as bringing vibrancy and diversity to the Rhode Valley. We are most proud of our partnership with the city and with its citizens, and we look forward to continued collaboration as we all work for a welcoming and inclusive community for all people, and especially the most vulnerable. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Jones. Thank you, sir. For reading of the proclamation. Now we have another proclamation uh, for a gentleman that I didn't know was here until I kept looking and I see that he doesn't have it, be it that he's here, but uh, someone who's served this community for years and years and years and uh, uh, has done some outstanding work and it's a sort of a sad time uh, that he'll be here. Proclamation declaring Monday, June 21st, 2021 as Wayne G. Strickland Day to celebrate his upcoming retirement as Executive Director of the Roanoke Valley Allegheny Regional Commission. 
And I'm going to call on Council Member Best Pitch to read the proclamation in its entirety. And since he is present, Mr. Mayor, with your permission, I'd like to ask him to join us at the podium. Yes, sir. Come on down, man. I'm going to give this to you, Wayne, and I'll read from the large print edition over here. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas Wayne G. Strickland, Executive Director of the Roanoke Valley Allegheny Regional Commission, will retire on June 30, 2021, after 42 years of service to the Roanoke Valley and surrounding localities. Whereas Mr. Strickland earned a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in political science and geography from Georgia State University in 1972 and 1974, respectively, and in 1979, earned a Master of City Planning degree from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Whereas in 1979, Mr. Strickland joined the Regional Commission, then known as the Fifth Planning District Commission, as a regional planner, and in 1981 was promoted to Chief of Land Use and Environmental Planning, and was appointed Executive Director of the Regional Commission in 1987 and has served in that capacity for 34 years. Whereas many key regional initiatives, such as the Greenway Commission, Western Virginia Water Authority, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy, the Partnership for a Livable Roanoke Valley, and the Roanoke Valley Broadband Authority and others have been supported by the Regional Commission since their inception. And whereas Mr. Strickland assumed leadership roles in various professional organizations, such as the National Association of Development Organizations Southeast Regional Directors Institute, the Development District Association of Appalachia, the Rural Planning Caucus of Virginia, the Southwest Virginia Chapter of the American Society for Public Administration, the Virginia Chapter of the American Planning Association and the Virginia Association of Planning District Commissions. Now, therefore, I, Bill Bespitch, Council Member, on behalf of Sherman P. Lee Sr., Mayor of the City of Roanoke, Virginia, do hereby celebrate the retirement of Wayne G. Strickland and commend him for his exceptional legacy of service and leadership and proclaim June 21st throughout this great seven-time All-America City as Wayne G. Strickland Day. And Mr. Mayor, be before I uh, ask Mr. Strickland if he has comments that he'd like to share, it's been my honor and privilege to serve as a member of the Regional Commission for either yes. 13 or 14 years, or I'm not sure, <laughs> sure exactly how I many it's been, but I will also be terminating uh, my service on the commission on June 30th as well. And I can tell you, when, when I read the part about supporting so many initiatives throughout the region since their inception, I know that in many cases he has been involved in the inception before some of these organizations even were officially established to get them started uh, and, and build the foundation for them to, uh, to work from. So we're certainly going to miss you, Wayne, and I'll at, turn the podium over to you. Thank you, Bill. Um, Mayor Lee, members of council, Mr. Cowell. You know, it has been a long time, but I got worried when, when the mayor was talking to me. It's been years and years and years. <laughs> and I started thinking, gee, when I came here, I was in my 20s. So. <laughs> and it has been a while. But it, I've enjoyed every moment of it. And we certainly have appreciated all the support from the city. I don't know if you remember Mr. Hamp Thompson. Do you remember Mr. Hamp Thompson? Back in the day, he was one of the first, one of our first leaders of the commission. Back, I guess, in the in the 70s. Um, and I, um, Ms. Bowles, when she was here, she actually was here, I think, when I was hired. So I have a long, um, you know, interaction with the council, but also with your staff, and I've enjoyed it. And someone asked me, "What are you going to miss?" And I said, "Well, you know, the job. I love the job. It's fun." I won't miss the job, I'll miss the people. I'll miss the people in, this, in, the, in the city, and I'll miss people in the region, I'll miss the people in the state, 
and throughout you know all the interaction I've had with folks throughout the nation. So it's been it's been a lot of fun, and I appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wayne. Let me say that uh, we're gonna miss you, and uh, don't get too far away because we can call on you on certain things, and we need some guidance. I mean, you have a tremendous history in this valley, and working with. Uh, all everyone in the region and uh, you know we just want to thank you for all that you've done and that's why we presented that proclamation and uh, and I felt that Mr. Bestridge was the most appropriate person to be to read that because we always go to him on issues in the regional <laughs> uh, with <laughs> with the planning commission and uh, uh, and he's always there to, to help and so but thank you for your leadership and your guidance as we go forth. And I think we are a better place. I know we're a better place because of it. Well, thank you, Mary. And I only live two miles away, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll right. be over here quickly, but bye. Right. But, but right. thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the recognition. Thank you, man. All right. of another proclamation today declaring the month of June 2021 as Pride and Diversity Days. And I'm pleased to recognize Council Member Cobb who will read that proclamation in its entirety, uh, acknowledging it and offering some remarks. Councilman Cobb. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. The resolution or the proclamation is entitled Pride Month. Whereas Roanoke is a welcoming and compassionate city that embraces the diversity of our residents, including our LGBTQ plus community, in which lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and ally citizens have been part of Roanoke's history since its beginning, and a visible community formed here in the 1960s, anchored by the region's first known gay bar, the Trade Winds, which opened on Franklin Road in 1953. Whereas the first gay liberation organization in the city, the Gay Alliance of the Roanoke Valley, was founded in 1971 and was followed in 1977 by the Free Alliance for Individual Rights, with both organizations advocating against the harassment of gay men by bar owners and law enforcement. Whereas transgender Roanokers became increasingly visible in the 1970s and a group of trans women attempted in the late 70s to organize the region's first chapter of Tri-S, a pioneering national trans organization. And in late 1978, the park, which today is the only nightclub that remains from that era, opened to rave reviews. In 1980, lesbians in Roanoke formed their own organization, First Friday, and then the annual Roanoke Valley Women's Retreats. Whereas the AIDS crisis hit Roanoke hard with the first local death from AIDS reported in 1983, Gay activist groups such as the Blue Ridge Lambda Alliance and the Roanoke Valley chapter of the Virginia Gay Alliance organized the earliest AIDS advocacy and care work alongside the Metropolitan Community Church of the Blue Ridge. Out of these efforts emerged the Blue Ridge AIDS Support Services, also known as BRASS, and the Roanoke AIDS Project. Today, the drop-in center carries on this important work in our community. Whereas in 1990, a coalition of gay and lesbian groups formed the Alliance of Lesbian and Gay Organizations, and in September of that year, put on the city's first Pride Festival in Wasina Park. In September 2000, an anti-gay shooting at the Backstreet Cafe on Salem Avenue took the life of one person and wounded six others. This hate crime shook the city and opened a new chapter in our LGBTQ plus history. Whereas the 21st century has witnessed the emergence of new organizations and initiatives, including the founding of Ladies and Gents of the Blue Ridge Transgender Alliance in 2007, the growth of Roanoke Pride and the Pride in the Park Festival, the formation of Youth Saga and PRISM Foundation supporting LGBTQ youth, the region's first LGBTQ plus community center, the Roanoke Diversity Center in 2013, the founding of Diversity Camp the only camp of its kind in the region in 2014, and the emergence of our first uniquely black LGBTQ organization, the House of Expression, 
in 2019. And whereas Roanoke is a place where the LGBTQ plus community can live, work, love, and play, now therefore I, Joseph L. Cobb, member of Roanoke City Council, on behalf of Sherman P. Lee, Senior Mayor of the City of Roanoke, Virginia, do hereby proclaim June 2021 throughout this great seven-time All-America City as Pride Month. And Mr. Mayor, I'd like to thank Dr. Samantha Rosenthal, who's a professor of history at Roanoke College and founder of the LGBTQ Southwest Virginia History Project for uh, their help in crafting the, res the proclamation today. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, um, Councilman Cobb, and, and, and let it be known that Roanoke is an inclusive city, and we recognize that this is Proud Month, and thank you, and thank you for the things that you do in the community to accentuate that, and it's made us aware of a lot of things as we, as we try not only here from governing here, but even as we uh, talk legislatively about things around the state that uh, you always uh, up front and forward about the things that we need to do and can do and recognize. That. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I am no Okay, thank you. All right, we're now down to the part of hearing the on the agenda items, item number three, which is hearing of citizens upon public matters. Uh, City Council sets this time as a priority for citizens to be heard. And I want to emphasize that this is the time that we set aside for citizens to be heard. Uh, and we have been doing this ever since I've been here. And this is something that, uh, is, that we do. And it's not done in every locality, but we make a point to do that. And all matters that come before us today uh, will be re referred to the city manager or the city staff for a response or recommendation or report to council uh, as a city manager may deem appropriate. So at this time, I'm going to ask our clerk, do we have any uh, citizens calling in to speak to council? Yes, um, we have one speaker, I believe, and that's Stephen Niamke. Okay. Oh, that, I was figuring, I wanted to figure out what that picture was. I saw something <laughs> on the board there. All right, that's great. Uh, Stephen, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Greetings, Mr. Mayor, esteemed members of council, dedicated city staff. I'm following up on the March 15th presentation where I address the issue of open carry on city property, encouraging you all to, uh, pro to prohibit open carry. But I also talk about the deeper issue which is the reason why people feel like they have to carry guns. Uh, I reference a man by the name of Charles Alfin, who is a lead trainer on Kingian nonviolence, and the fact that he would be the primary trainer for the Shanti Center Summit, which is taking place this coming weekend. So I've since followed up and sent an email uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, and to Vice Mayor uh, White Boy with information about the Shanti Center Summit. I trust that you all will circulate that among, among council. So I hope that you all will participate. It's this coming Friday through Sunday. Uh, it is free. Uh, you can register online. It's a Zoom event. Um, and it's about Kenyan nonviolence. It's about the beloved community. It's about changing the emphasis of our government affairs from building up the military to taking that, that energy, those, that money, those resources, and putting it into promoting peace and justice. And I already know each of you on a somewhat personal basis, and I know that the city has taken on an initiative about equity and justice. So I think this is consistent with your values and I believe it's transformation. So I wanted to share that information with you as personally as I could, um, and I am open to answer any questions you might have in the time remaining. Thank you. All right, Vice Mayor. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Stephen, I just have one question. On, it's several days, and I can come one day, but I can't do the other two. Will I get anything from the one day, Is it, or do I need to be able to participate all three days? That is a great question. So what you will get is a link for each individual presentation. So you will have, th think of it as a smorgasbord of information about peace and justice. You'll be able to pick and choose. So okay. you're not obligated to all three days. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much, Stephen. We'll, we'll be following up on that. And thank you. Okay. Let me do something that, uh, let me just make sure people understand where we are. Uh, due to the recent increase and severity in COVID-19 cases in the city of Roanoke, out of an abundance of caution, the Roanoke City Council had determined that temporary changes were necessary. Roanoke well, City Council members will continue to meet in person in City Council Chamber, observing all recommended safety protocols while members of the community wishing to address the City Council during hearing of citizens upon public matters are required to participate virtually or via email by contacting the city's clerk's office at clerk at roanokeva.gov uh, or by calling 540-853-2541 by 12 o'clock p.m. on the day of the meeting, which is June 21st. The council chamber will not be accessible to the general public during the meeting, and the meeting will continue to be broadcast via RVTV3 and on the city's Facebook account. So, uh, we ask and we're abiding by that uh, stipulation because of the COVID-19 virus. And while I'm on that, I want to say that please remember those of you that's out there that uh, it's a good time to get vaccinated, get your vaccination. Uh, we still need that. There's another variant out there uh, that's moving forward and it's, in some respects is as strong as the other COVID-19 virus out there, but it's time to vaccinate. And I encourage all of you to do that, not only for yourselves, but your families and people that you come in contact with. And uh, anything that has killed in this country, over half a million people, it's no joke. It's no joke. And so we ask you, and I ask you as the mayor of this city, to get vaccinated. And it's easy. You don't have any lines and people, there are a lot of different places where you can go get vaccinated. But please do that. And now, as you know, recently, uh, we're allowing our youth, youth children, uh, ages 11 or 12, up to 15, 16, are getting vaccinated. So there's no excuse. And let me say, uh, the prediction is that in southern states, this virus could take off again. So we took off our masks. We were out and enjoying ourselves, uh, especially here in the weekend. But if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we'll be right back there again. So I'm urging, uh, compelling you to please get vaccinated. All right. All right. Item number four is the consent agenda. All <coughs> matters listed under the consent agenda are considered to be routine by members of council. Council, by members of city council, and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of the items. If discussion is desired, the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. I want to call your attention to one request for a closed meeting from Vice Mayor Patricia White Board, Chairman of the City Personnel Committee, requesting that Council convene in a closed meeting to discuss a personnel matter, being the annual performance, performance of the Council appointed officer pursuant to Section 2.2-37 
11, Code of Virginia, as amended. I need a motion. So moved. Second. All right. Clerk, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bestpitch. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the consent agenda is approved. All right, we're now moving to our regular agenda, which is uh, number, I don't know, five is public hearings. We have none today. Petitions and communications, uh, we have none. Uh, we're up to item number seven, which is report of officers and comments of the city manager. Item number seven A one is the exception acceptance of the donation of two dual purposes police canines to the police department from the DePaco family and their company, Summit Nutritionalist International Incorporated. There is a resolution. Move the resolution. Sorry. Madam Clerk, could you please read the title paragraph? A resolution authorizing acceptance of a donation from the DePaco family and their company, Summit Nutritionals International, Inc., to the Roanoke City Police Department for two dual-purpose police service dogs and authorizing execution of any and all necessary documents to accept the donation. Thank you. Uh, is there any discussion from members of council? Uh, seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd? Aye. Mr. Bestpitch? Aye. Mr. Cobb? Aye. Mr. Jeffrey? Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones? Aye. Mayor Lee? Aye. And the resolution passes. Thank you. Item number 7A2 is the appropriation of third party funds and the appropriation of advanced appropriated bonds in connection with the new transit station. Uh, there's a budget ordinance. Budget ordinance. Second. All right. Madam Clerk, can you read the title paragraph? an ordinance to appropriate funding from the history partners and to de-appropriate bond funds not issued related to the transit station project, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2020-2021 capital project fund and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, is there any discussion from members of council? All right, Mr. Mr. Cow, could I ask you just to make a statement or two about sure. that so our citizens will know what's going on? Yeah, ha Thank happy you. to do that, Mayor. Um, the, the item that is before you is to do two things, really, um, both which have been anticipated through the entire journey of um, bringing the new transit facility um, into the uh, mode of construction. The first of those is the acceptance uh, ultimately of the um, $500,000 that our private partner in this endeavor will be bringing in. That is going ultimately to allow us to relocate our transit operations from the current facility to a temporary facility on the site that we will be constructing the new permanent. That will allow the developer to proceed in the redevelopment of the current site. So that's one part of this is to go ahead and appropriate those funds so that they're available when, um, when it's appropriate to be able to start using those. The, the other is you may recall that uh, we started this process with the anticipation of actually receiving federal funds to um, assist really do most of the, uh, pay most of the cost of the transit facility. Um, but at the same time, we also didn't want to exclusively, exclusively rely upon that. So we had built into the CIP a way in which we could use local funds to fund that if that became necessary. That of course is not necessary that we received actually an allocation from the Federal Transit Authority in excess even of what we had anticipated early on with the process. So this is allowing us to remove those dollars um, from the appropriation and they have already actually been reprogrammed into your five-year CIP um, going forward. So um, both of these are just kind of the next step in that process um, toward um, construction of this project. And of course, I think as you all know, the, uh, the project is currently out to bid for, um, for that construction. So is um, is progressing uh, forward as well. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any questions? 
All right, Madam Clerk, are we ready to call roll? On We're ready. Please. Um, Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Thank you. Uh, item number 7A3 is the appropriation of fleet insurance recovery funds, which recoveries help to offset the needed repair or replacement of city vehicles involved in an accident. There's the budget ordinance. Move the budget ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. An ordinance to appropriate funding from liable parties relating to fleet insurance recovery amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2020-2021 capital project fund and general fund appropriations and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right, any discussions? Comments by members of council? Mr. Mayor, I just have a Mr. comment Mayor. if I could. Uh, the attachment that is with the appropriation for this recovery funds, uh, I do think it was inadvertently attached uh, to 783, but does pertain to an item under number 12. So I would ask that that attachment be removed uh, from this report and placed with the appropriate report under number 12. Yeah, and I, and I believe the files that are online are, are accurate. It's the ones I think you all had received in your packets. So. Okay. All right. Can you make that? Yes, we'll we'll adjust it. Okay. All right. Any other comments? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, please call. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Miss Moon Reynolds. Aye. Miss Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Thank you. All right, item. Well, no. We're going to have comments from uh, our city manager, Mr. Cowell, and I recognize him at this time. Thank you, Mayor. I'm sorry, just pulling up. The... Actually, if it is okay, I would like to defer my comments. Um, I have only one, one collection of comments, and that is when you acknowledge the service of Deputy City Manager Stowell, and I'd like to reserve my comments to that okay. point. Okay. So, thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, item number eight is uh, reports of committees, a report of certain authorities, boards, committees, and commissions in which city council serves as liaisons or appointees. Any uh, comments by members of council? All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to item number nine, which is unfinished business. And item number 10, which is the introduction and consideration of ordinances and resolutions. Uh, item 10A is a resolution commending the services rendered to the city of Roanoke by Sherman M. Stovall as deputy city manager on the occasion of his retirement. Move the resolution. Second. All right. I'll ask, well, I will read that in its entirety. Okay. I'm going to ask Mr. Stovall to join me at the podium. And uh, we're going to recognize him for his years and years and years of service. <laughs> This was the day that I personally dreaded. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be like, uh, 
being involved in council matters and Sherman not be here. So I do it grudgingly, Sherman, but we have to have this done. All right, first of all, we have a resolution that I will read. A resolution recognizing and commending the services rendered to the city, to this city, by Sherman M. Stovall as its deputy city manager and expressing the gratitude and appreciations of the city and its people for his service. Whereas Mr. Stovall will resign from his position with the city as deputy city manager effective June 30th, 2021, after serving the city for 27 years. Whereas Mr. Stovall began serving in the city manager's office as assistant city manager for operations in 2010 and was elevated to deputy city manager in August of 2020. Whereas prior to his service in the city manager's office, Mr. Stovall served as the director of management and budget, a position he held starting in June of 2004 and served in various positions within city government since 1994. Whereas in 2017, during a period when the city was without a permanent city manager, Mr. Stovall served for six months as acting city manager, carrying out the duties of the city manager along with his continued leadership of the departments managed under operations. Whereas Mr. Stovall, private and public work experience, education, and performance made him the ideal person to help shepherd the city's organization during this interim period. Whereas before coming to the city, Mr. Stovall held administrative positions with Dominion Bank Shares Cooperation. Whereas during his tenure, Mr. Stovall provided leadership for a number of important capital projects, including the Roanoke City Market Building Renovation, the renovation of Elmwood Park, the Market Square renovation, restoration of the Municipal North Lobby, and renovations of the Human Resource Training Room, and reopening of the Campbell Avenue entrance into the Municipal Building, the 10th Street Improvement Project, the construction of a new train platform to accommodate Amtrak passenger rail service, the Franklin Road Bridge Replacement Project, the Cologne Avenue Improvement Project, construction of the E911 VA811 Communications Center and the new fire station number seven, renovation of all city library branch locations, completion of paving of paving 75 lane miles, the largest contract in city history, and many other projects. Man, that's just about everything we've done. <laughs> wow, and I've been here 17 years, and wow, that covers a lot of work there, Mr. Stovall. Whereas Mr. Stovall led the development and implementation of the city's stormwater utility in 2014. Whereas under Mr. Stovall's supervision, the Roanoke Fire and EMS Department, <clears throat> excuse me, earned international accreditation and reaccreditation by the Center for Public Safety Excellence, the Commission on Fire Accreditation International, and the E911 Center attained accreditation and reaccreditation from the National Public Safety Communications Agency through the Commission on accreditation for law enforcement agencies. Whereas Mr. Stovall's leadership, under his leadership, the city garnered awards and recognitions, 
including the U.S. Department of Energy's recognition of Berglund Center for its Better Buildings Challenge, the APWA Regional and National Awards for the renovation of the Roanoke City Market Building, the APWA Mid-Atlantic Chapter Project of the Year Award for the Williamson Road Branch Library Project, and the Melrose Branch Library Project. The Center for Digital Government's recognition as a top digital city. The Government Finance Officers Association Distinguished Budget Presentation Award for consecutive years. The Virginia Chapter of the American Planning Association's 2015 Award for Grassroots Efforts for the Gainesboro History Walk Interpretive Panels Project and recognition from 100 Best Fleets in America as one of the top 50 leading fleets for consecutive years. Whereas Mr. Stovall was represented, has represented the city on a number of boards and committees, including the Greater Roanoke Transit Company, the Market Building Foundation Board, the Fine Contribution Board, and Roanoke Valley Juvenile Detention Center, whereas Mr. Stovall has served the city of Roanoke with the highest professionalism and competence and exhibited intelligence, skill, and a strong work ethic throughout his, his tenure as deputy city manager. Therefore, be resolved by the council of the city of Roanoke as follows. This council adopts this resolution as its means of recognizing and commending the meritorious services rendered to the city of Roanoke and its people by Sherman M. Stovall, deputy city manager, expressing the gratitude and appreciation of the city and its citizens for his service. The city clerk is now directed to forward an attested copy of this resolution, which we have to Sherman Stovall. So it is with <coughs> great honor that I present this resolution to Mr. Stovall. But before I do that, I want to have we had a motion and second it for the resolution? We have motion and second it. All right, I want to ask, are there, is there any discussion? And I'm sure there will be. We'll go over that. I want to ask the clerk to call the roll. All right. Vice Mayor White Boyd? Aye. Mr. Bespitch? Aye. Mr. Carr? Aye. Mr. Jeffrey? Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds? Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones? Aye. And Mayor Lee? Aye. And the resolution passes. So, Sherman? Congratulations, man. Thank you, Mayor. I had to, you know, I'm always calling on Sherman. As you you see how much in, how involved he was with the city. So if you want to find out who's doing what and what we're doing and where we are, uh, I called Sherman. And I'm sure many of you did the same thing a number of times. And Sherman also said that he didn't want a lot of big things. He wanted to quietly <laughs> move out. Not a lot of fanfare. Well, I said, Sherman, the council, we got to recognize you, man, for that, for something, and uh, for those years of service. So I'm pleased and honored to present to him this key to the city, which he probably got some keys to most things anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to present this key to Sherman for his outstanding work, commitment, and dedication, and 
and I feel that Warner will not be uh, as progressive as we have been over the years if it wasn't for his guidance and leadership and dedication to getting it done. So Sherman, with that, this is the highest award that we can present to you from the city, and this is something we want you to put right uh, right in your living room so every day you walk through <laughs> there. Oh, I work for one of the city. Thank you. So thank you, Sherman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, okay. All right, before Sherman takes the mic, I want to give my colleagues an opportunity to, to address or have remarks. I'll start with Mr. Bestridge. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and, and thank you, Sherman. Uh, I think you've known me long enough and really well enough to know that I'm rarely at a loss for words. But I don't think I have the words this afternoon to really let you know how much I appreciate what you've done. You know, as elected officials, especially in the city of Roanoke, not having any wards or districts, we are elected to represent all the people of the city of Roanoke. And our pledge to them is that we will do what is best for all the citizens. And it's been great to have you right there with us, knowing every day that whatever you recommend is going to be in the best interest, help the greatest number of people, and harm the least number of people throughout the city of Roanoke. And it's that dedication. I mean, we can go on and on with the list. I know a couple of things that were left off, uh, but that's not really the point. The point is where your heart has been all these years. Not with the council, not with the city government, but with the citizens of the city of Roanoke that you have served so well. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Boyd. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and uh, Mr. Stovall. I, I really, my time was really brief with you, but I want to speak on behalf of the employees that personally stopped me in the hallways and the elevators to tell me that they are going to miss you because of your competence, like the mayor said, your, your dedication to this city. Um, they made a point to tell me that. Um, a lot of them are really concerned, but we got Clarence, we got some big shoes to fill, <laughs> but they wanted me to know that they appreciated you and that they are going to miss you and a lot of them are at a loss they're like what are we going to do without Sherman and that's how much they appreciate you and I just wanted to tell you that's how the people in this building feel about you thank you for your dedication and your hard work enjoy your retirement and I hope to see you around the neighborhood All right. Let's call. thank you Mr. Mayor and Sherman I just want to share again some remarks that I shared during the uh, GRTC board meeting because I, I think it's important for citizens to hear, just in addition to what my colleagues have shared, the profound difference you've made uh, in our city. When I think of you, um, I think of the eye in a storm. We've had a very stormy last year with the pandemic and with any number of issues that have come up. And certainly over 27 years, you've seen your share of storms. <laughs> But in the middle of all of that, as we know, there is an eye. There is a, a place of calm. And we have always been able to turn to you uh, for that calmness. And while I recognize you may not always feel that inside, you convey it, and that's what's important. Because just being in your presence helps calm me down. I think it helps calm just about everybody down. And, and we're grateful for that. We need that. And, uh, we hope that now, as you retire, that you can enjoy some calm yourself. I'm trying to practice not receiving emails from Sherman Stovall, because <laughs> um, you've had to report to us some very difficult things that none of us have wanted to necessarily hear about. Uh, but you've done so with grace and with the utmost information that you can provide. And so uh, thank you for your authenticity, your honesty, your integrity. We are so grateful for you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey. Mr. Stovall, um, I'm new to council, but I've met you and known you prior 
of joining council. And even when joining council, I used to call Mayor Lee asking for things. And Mayor Lee said, talk to Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> talk to Sherman. And, and you, every time I do call, you always present professionalism and respect in all each call. And I'm pretty sure you do that to all the citizens of Roanoke. And I just uh, applaud you for the great service you've done to the city. Um, I have received, every time I have questions, I've always called you. I don't know who I'm going to call now. I guess I'll harass Bob and I'll Clarence. <laughs> but I'm going to harass, I'm sorry that you're leaving. Um, I wish you will stay. And I know I've talked to you several times about staying. You looked at me like I was crazy <laughs> <laughs> about staying. But I, I just wanted to just say I truly respect you. You're a very good man, and you deserve all the honors that you're receiving. And I wish you a well retirement. And I'll be seeing you in church. So. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Thank you. Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. It has been a, a true journey with you. And I have a lot I could say, but uh, I did write it down because I did not want to forget some of the things. So I will say I have known you uh, since high school. We came out of school together. And we have had, and I've had the privilege of working with you. And I've watched your career develop, as did mine, over the past 25 plus years. And I recall when you came into the city, I believe it was the municipal auditor's office. Oh, okay, was it finance? It was uh, the HUD budget team. Okay, the budget team, okay. I was trying to remember, I knew it dealt with a little <laughs> bit of money there. And then you went on, I definitely know when you went to management and budget, and then you became the director. I was so excited for you because that was a large step to be taking in the administration. And then uh, the last part of your career under Darlene Birch, I'm being uh, appointed as the assistant uh, city manager. Uh, I always have had to say that you've exhibited professional uh, demeanor. You have a humble spirit. No matter what was going on around you, you kept, your, you kept yourself together, even when others around you were falling apart. Uh, I know several times when I would come to you and you would say, Miss Moon, really? And you would calm me down and you would thank me. And I mean, I have to say, you have exhibited that demeanor through and through. And I believe that to be true with all people, all walks of life, whether they wore a suit or whether they wore tattered clothes. You treated them all the same. And for that, I, I really think you are deserving uh, a man. Um, uh, I want to wish you much success as you go forth in your seasons of expectation. Uh, and I want you to remember, everyone knows is our favorite scripture, and I have to say it, Jeremiah 29, uh, 11 and 12. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then when you call on me, saith the Lord, and come and pray to me. I will listen to you. Sherman, I truly believe the Lord has ordered your steps uh, through these past 27 years uh, that you've had with the city. And I want to say congratulations on a rewarding career. And Godspeed, my friend. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Ms. Sanchez-Jones. Well, I just want to thank you for all your years of service, and I am really sorry that um, I didn't get to work really close with you, but I am a woman that likes to give second opportunities. Could you come back and mentor me? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Enjoy your retirement. Thank you. Uh, before I call on the city manager, I want to know if anybody here has any comments they want to share with them. Any of the workers? you want to share uh, as a point of privilege, I'll do that as mayor. So you all want to say something? All right, I'm not going to push it. I got you. I see Amelia shaking her head, so I learned how to go on with that. Uh, we're pleased. But at this time, well, I just want to say a few things, uh, and then I'll recognize our city manager. But Sherman, thank you, man. And uh, uh, one of the reasons, and, and as Robert mentioned, uh, I'll tell people to contact Sherman because you know the details 
I'm saying, uh, but contact Sherman, and because so many people know you, so many people will know you, and I'll tell them, I'll say certain things, and they said, okay, or can I, how can I find out about this? So I want to thank you for doing that. You've always been accessible, uh, uh, and I appreciate you, and as um, Ms. Moon Reynolds stated, you had the type of personality that you were approachable, and no question was too simple. I mean, you'd break it down and explain that, and, and I'm going to miss that, because Sometimes and oftentimes, you know, with me being as a mayor, I get calls and not only local but other calls, and I would either call you or have them to call you to say, Sherman, what's going on here? How, you know, and, and uh, you and I understand that, but let me make it plain, man. Break it down <laughs> so I can make sure we get the message in. It was good that we had that kind of relationship that we could talk to each other. and. Uh, you being a native of Royal Oak, you could tell when somebody was giving you the run around or trying to play it, <laughs> trying to do that. But man, you've been great. It's been great. And I got some plans for you in my back pocket, but I'm going to keep them back there. I want to tell you right now. All right. So thank you, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. And thank you. All right, and at this time, I'm pleased to recognize our city manager. Thank, thank you, Mayor, and I won't belabor this much longer because Sherman really did not want this. So, uh, so <laughs> I, I appreciate his uh, his willingness to uh, to do this. I told him, I said, Sherman, it's kind of like funerals and weddings. You know, it's really for everybody else and stuff. So, you know, right. I, I I really the role of the deputy city manager is, and Sherman's heard me say, it's, it's the greatest job that there is. It's also an extraordinarily tough job that I think people fail to uh, recognize just how difficult um, that job is. And Sherman has always done that with grace and dignity, and I certainly want to acknowledge that. Um, when I, you all know this, that when I uh, interviewed for this job, one of the things the recruiter told us, and I presume all the candidates said, now your two assistants, they're on their path to retirement, so um, just know, and, and I appreciated that. And one of the first conversations that Sherman and Brian Townsend and I had was, please just don't retire at the same time. So <laughs> I really appreciated that he and Brian staggered that, that time. The, uh, the privilege that it afforded me to know that you all were here providing that stability while I figured out what the heck is going on here in Roanoke and how do I get involved in this, um, I don't take lightly. That was a, a tremendous opportunity that I have had. I texted the picture already to Brian of, of you all up there, so now he knows he's in, he's in the loop as well. Um, I really do appreciate that, that opportunity. Um, it has meant a lot for me as I came into the organization. Um, you all have said this, but I want to again reinforce that you know Sherman, as, as much as Sherman is dedicated to this city, and he is dedicated to this city, I also want to acknowledge his dedication to his family, his church, and God, um, because really, um, as much as he loves the city, those others are much higher on the list as well for him, and he has exhibited that as well. Um, early, early founders of this country, the very first people we had working for government really treasured uh, virtue and public over self, and I think, Sherman, you have exhibited that um, all the way through the time I've known you and from what I've gathered the entire time that you have worked in public service, and so certainly want to um, thank you for all your years of public service, all the help that you've provided me personally. He's already said I can text him whenever I need to, so I greatly appreciate that as well. And I know you're going to enjoy retirement. Um, I also know you're going to enjoy that first snowfall that you don't have to do. With. <laughs> <laughs> so thank, thank you, Sherman. I appreciate it. All right. All right, Sherman. It's your time, man. Thank you. Mayor and members of council, certainly thank you for taking the time this afternoon to recognize me. Um, God is good. Um, I remember when um, I was the youngest person around the table. <laughs> <laughs> and now um, I'm the oldest person around the table. So God is, God is good. I thank you for the times that you've allowed me to fall and pick myself back up and just run a little while longer. So I thank you for this recognition. Um, I thank you for this honor. It's something that um, I greatly appreciate. When I started working for the city back in 1994, I was just looking for a job. And I got much more than that. I got um, an opportunity. And I will forever be grateful for that. Um, again, God is good. I've been blessed to work with some of the giants in government service. Uh, Barry Key, the former director of management and budget, taught me everything that I know about budgeting and about being a professional. 
Uh, Diane Akers, uh, the former uh, budget manager, taught me the same things. Uh, finance directors, Jim Grisso, Jesse Hall. Most importantly, uh, Brian Townsend and I considered ourselves to be sons of Darlene Bertram in government <laughs> service. So Darlene basically taught me most of everything that I know about government administration. And she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I will forever be grateful to her as well as Barry Key for that as, as well. Um, I want to thank Bob Cowell. Um, I would run, run through a wall for, for Bob. Um, he's just that type of city manager. So I've been really, really blessed. Um, even though I am an introvert, um, I am a very opinionated introvert, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not shy about voicing my opinion, and Brian Townsend was the same way. So I want to thank Bob for putting up with Brian and me. Uh, certainly, we uh, on occasion could be a handful. Again, God is good. Um, at the end of the day, I just want to be known as that boy from the 1900 block of Mercer Avenue who was able to work for his city. Thank you. Okay, we're still, uh, well, we're on item number 11, which is motion and miscellaneous business. Are there any inquiries or comments by the mayor, members of the city council? What's the best picture? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and following that, uh, as Mr. Cal pointed out, and as Mr. Stovall made reference to the fact in, in relatively short order, we have lost two outstanding assistants slash deputy city managers. And I just wanted to take a moment, Mr. Mayor, to let Mr. Richardson out there and Mr. Greer know that we're not saying that we don't think you can do just as much. <laughs> we're not saying that we don't think you can carry this city just as far. My hope is that you use what you have seen from both Mr. Townsend and Mr. Stovall as challenge and inspiration because it doesn't matter how good a job they did. There's still improvements to be made in this city. And with all of us working together, we can do that. So I just wanted to, to let you know that uh, we're, we're going to be looking and we're going to be listening and we're going to be uh, expecting great things from the two of you as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see it. Anybody else have any comments? All right. Hearing none, uh, item number B is vacancies on certain authorities, boards, and commissions. We have none. And uh, we're now down to item 12, which is other business. And and the statement of purpose that I want to make regarding this business that we're going to vote on shortly. This afternoon, City Council will be considering the following items for action in connection with the city's recommended 2021-2022 fiscal year budget, effective July 1st, 20, 2021 along with other related items. Council conducted public hearings on May 24, 2021 to receive public comments regarding the recommended FY 2021-2022 budget and proposed tax increase on real estate. The public hearings were open and closed that evening. A certificate of the Director of Finance advising that funds required by the 2021-2022 20, 
general fund, stormwater utility fund, civic facilities fund, parking fund, risk management fund, school general fund, school food fund budgets will be available for appropriation subject to the adoption of the revenue measures proposed by the city manager in the June 21st, 2021 city council agenda. Without objection by the council, communication, this communication will, will be received and filed. All right, item number two is the reaffirmation, reaffirmation of real estate, reaffirmation, excuse me, of real estate tax rate. There's an ordinance that we need to adopt. Move the ordinance. Second. Uh, I will ask the clerk to please read the title paragraph. An ordinance adopting and reaffirming <coughs> the, real, the real property tax as set forth in Article 2 of Chapter 32 of the Code of the City of Roanoke and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right. In the, <coughs> in the discussions or comments, questions or comments by the City Council? Heard none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the ordinance passes. Thank you. Item number three is the amendment of the FY 2022 fee uh -huh. uh, <coughs> compendium for fire and EMS, solid waste management, and stormwater fee adjustments. And there are eight measures for adoption with regard to this matter, uh, and seven resolutions and one ordinance. All right, I have a first resolution, uh, which I need a motion for. Move the resolution. Second. All right. Madam Clerk, read the title paragraph. A resolution amending the fee compendium to include fees for solid waste collection as set out below and establishing an effective date. Are there any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the first resolution passes. Thank you. I need a motion on the second resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution amending the fee compendium to amend fees for downtown compactors in the central business district as set out below and establishing an effective date. All right, any discussion? My members of council. Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. Mayor Lee. Aye. And thank you. The second resolution passes. Oh, the third resolution, I need a motion. Move the resolution. Second. second. All right. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution amending certain fees and charges with regard to fire prevention, re-inspections, amending the fee compendium and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Any discussion, members of council? All right, hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Uh, Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the third resolution passes, thank you. We have a fourth resolution. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution amending the Roanoke Fire EMS Fire Prevention Code permit fees to be charged by the Roanoke Fire EMS Department, providing for an effective date and directing amendment of the fee compendium. All right. Any discussion by members of council? Hearing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. 
Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the <clears throat> fourth resolution passes. Thank you. All right. I need a motion on the fifth resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. A resolution amending the fee compendium to include certain fees and charges with regard to fire prevention, fire protection system inspections conducted by the Roanoke Fire Marshal's Office under the authority of the building commissioner and providing an effective date. Thank you. Is there any discussion among members of council? All right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespitch. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And thank you. The fifth resolution passes. All right, the sixth resolution, I need a motion. Move the resolution. Second. Second. Madam Clerk, can you read the title program, please? A resolution amending the fee compendium to include certain fees and charges with regard to residential target hazard inspections conduct, <coughs> excuse me, conducted by the Roanoke Fire Marshal's Office and providing for an effective date. Thank you. Any discussion, members of council? Well, hearing none, I'll ask Clerk to call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the sixth resolution passes. Thank you. All right, I need a motion on the seventh resolution. Move the resolution. Second. Madam Clerk, can you read the title paragraph? A resolution amending the fee compendium to include certain fees and charges with regard to commercial target hazard inspections conducted by the Roanoke Fire Marshal's Office and provided for an effective date. All right, any discussion or comments? All right, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Carb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the seventh resolution passes. Uh, Madam Clerk, we now have an ordinance. All right. I need a motion. Move the ordinance. Second. All right. Any, Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. An ordinance amending the monthly stormwater utility fee rate per billing unit as provided for the code of the city of Roanoke, section 11.5-3, establishing a phase in period and an effective date for each phase, authorizing the city manager to take certain actions in connection with such stormwater utility fee rate, amending the city's fee compendium and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. All right. Any discussion by members of council? All right, hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the ordinance passes. Thank you. We're now at item four, which is the adoption of an annual general stormwater utility civic facilities, parking risk management, school general, school food services, and grant fund appropriation for the fiscal year beginning, fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 and ending June 30th, 2022. There is a budget ordinance. Move the ordinance. Second. All right, Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. Mm -hmm. An ordinance adopting the annual general stormwater utility, civic facilities, parking, risk management, school general, and school food services appropriations of the City of Roanoke for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021 
and ending June 30, 2022, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or comments by members of council? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. Uh, the budget ordinance passes. Thank you. Uh, I know five of the endorsement of the capital improvement program uh, update for FY 2022 through 2026. There are two measures. There's a resolution. Need a motion. Move the resolution. Second. All right. Madam Clerk, can you read that title paragraph? A resolution endorsing the update to the capital improvement program submitted by the city manager in the city council agenda report of June 21st, 2021. All right. Any discussion? Comments from members of council? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the resolution passes. Thank you. I need a motion on the budget ordinance. Move the budget ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please read the title paragraph. An ordinance to appropriate funding for the FY 2022 through 2026 update to the capital improvement program, amending and reordaining certain sections of the 2021 general capital projects and grant funds appropriations, and dispensing with the second reading by title of this ordinance. Thank you. Any discussion by members of council? All right. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the budget ordinance passes. Item number six is the adoption of a pay plan for officers, employees, court appointed officers, and constitutional officers of the city an authorization for certain salary adjustments and merit increases and monthly stipends for certain boards and commission members effective July 1, 2021. There is an ordinance. Move the ordinance. Second. I'll ask the clerk to please read the title paragraph. An ordinance to adopt and establish a pay plan for officers, employees, council appointed officers, and constitutional officers of the city, effective July 1st, 2021, providing for certain salary adjustments, authorizing various annual pay supplements for certain officers and employees, providing for an effective date and dispensing with the second reading of this ordinance by title. All right. Is there any discussion by members of council? Mayor, if I, if I may, oh, sorry, go ahead, Vice Mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, since this is the last measure that's associated with the budget, I just wanted to make two, two comments. Um, one of those is directly related to this item, which I want to just acknowledge um, that this uh, pay plan incorporates what is um, probably the most substantial um, increase that we have been able to begin, and it's a beginning because it's actually going to unfold over the next couple of years relative to our um, community safety, our public safety employees um, as well. So this is a significant step in moving forward in addressing compensation for our sworn officers in the police and sheriff's department as well as our fire EMS um, employees. And I greatly appreciate the council's um, willingness and, and actually leadership on this issue as well and want to acknowledge that. Um, second piece of this is, uh, of course, I want to thank you all for the support that you've provided through the development of this year's budget just like last year it was a budget like none other that we've we've assembled before um, and i suspect the next one will be uh, a bit different as well as things go forward and i also want to acknowledge the group that has been diligently standing in the back of the room since this is the last measure they they don't get acknowledgement to all those other measures are passed though so that's why the, but amelia and her group um this was paul's first budget to kind of lead through 
um, the effort, and so I do want to acknowledge the work and the dedication that they provided um, to ensure that over $300 million of taxpaying money is going back into the community in the delivery of services and the um, development of many of those um, assets in the community that we all depend upon um, to, for our quality of life as well as um, just um, being able to make the city run. So I, I want to thank them and their effort and Amelia and your leadership in this effort as well. So thank you. Thank you. I want to come to you, Ms. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cal. And I thank it. I'm glad that you mentioned that and brought that up because the public needs to know in terms of where we are with regards to public safety and the police officers. Uh, and I've had nothing but questions from uh, Sunday through about 10 minutes before I came in here uh, <laughs> regarding that and what we're doing for our police officers, uh, especially the sworn officers and the work that they do and how can we do all that we can to retain them. And uh, uh, I think it's so important. So I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that and brought that up. All right, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, but between you and Mr. Cowell, I think you pretty much uh, made my comments, but I just wanted to thank uh, Mr. Cowell and his staff. Like you said, Mr. Mayor, um, we, we have one bucket and, and you've got to figure out how to distribute it as fair and as equitable as possible. And some of these increases were um, long overdue and I'm glad, you know, really glad that we were able to do it. And I just wanted to commend you and your staff for getting it done. Um, and like I said, it, as fair and as equitable as possible. I know there are a lot of people gonna be real happy, some maybe happy enough, but thank you thank for you. what you've done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right, any other comments from anybody else on council? All right, uh, so Madam Clerk, tell me where we are on this. We are ready to call the roll. Okay, go ahead and call the roll, please. Okay, Vice Mayor White Boyd. Aye. Mr. Bespich. Aye. Mr. Cobb. Aye. Mr. Jeffrey. Aye. Ms. Moon Reynolds. Aye. Ms. Sanchez Jones. Aye. And Mayor Lee. Aye. And the ordinance passes. Thank, thank you all. All right. Uh, if there's no further business at this time to come before council, uh, we will call a recess for a legislative meeting and then thereafter a closed meeting uh, in the council's conference room. So uh, I'm going to close this adjourn. adjourn uh, well, we're going to recess for this meeting, and we'll come back after uh, a couple of meetings that we have. Thank you. <laughs>